Hey everyone, Bob here. Today, I'm gonna explain to you how we're gonna determine the man hour required and the labor cost required to do a 16 cylinder V-type engine major overhaul. Okay, this is uh, coming from the work order that the uh, motor pool or a workshop is having and they need to do a determination of the man hour required to do this overhauling. And also the cost accounting department is also seeking for a, a uh, detailed uh, man hour requirement to carry out this major overhaul. And also of course the labor cost. And actually this is the services that the that this company is providing to customers who own some uh, heavy equipment, some engines, uh, doing overhauling, doing, doing uh, engine rebuilding, and doing uh, re rehabilitation of some uh, heavy equipment. This is the kind of thing that they're doing as far as their services is concerned. So the, the thing that the cost accounting is only looking for is to have the the requirement hours so that be able to do the the costing and one of the costing is the labor and also others are like the uh, the parts that are required to be replaced things like that okay so this is a 16 cylinder v type engine major, major overhaul and this is coming from the uh, work order from from the uh, shop which is run by the operation manager and the work order, it could be called, you know, some some uh, operations manager is calling this work order and some other managers is calling this a uh, job order. It doesn't matter, they're all, all the same. So work order is like the engine major overhaul or engine rebuilding, the 16 cylinder V type engine. This is a huge uh, engine. Uh, the application of, for this engine is like uh, being, being uh, utilized for uh, for uh, coupling with the a generating set or generator, or it could be uh, application could be a installed on heavy equipment machinery like you know like uh, uh, a, a huge uh, hauler. Okay, maybe perhaps a hundred uh, tons capacity hauler. That's huge uh, equipment. They call it monster equipment. Okay, so. So the work order again is just for the engine major overhaul and or engine rebuilding for the 16 cylinder V type engine. And and the the mechanics or the or whoever is ho, you know doing the uh, reception, oh, sometimes they, they have a health and safety uh, rather heavy equipment uh, uh, receptionist or oh, who is doing the uh, who is actually preparing the a, a work order. And the diagnosis of the engine that the engine is having an engine knock. Okay, an engine knock is coming from the, uh, perhaps coming from the pistons is knocking or coming from the uh, uh, crankshaft uh, main uh, bearing journals or connecting rod journals or connecting rod bearings. Or it could be, uh, you know, this would be a dangerous uh, occurrence of the engine. And it needs to be, you know, disassembled and look into. And, and usually they do already a major overhaul when it comes to this. And also engine blow by. Engine blow by is like, you know, you have a combustion on top of the of the cylinder of the piston. And all the pressure is just, you know, instead of having a good compression, uh, you know, compression. Uh, uh, cycle of the the of the of the engine uh, for combustion the 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 pressure that is being uh, you know compressed is leaking through the piston rings you know, around the pistons so they call it engine blue by so the problem with this is that the the, the piston rings are already damaged and it, and it doesn't hold or seal the 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 combustion uh, process okay and also sometimes uh, this pumping oil is happen you know the the 
the oil in the lubrication pan or in the uh, crankcase of the engine block supposed to stay there and only the the uh, oil pump is go is pumping the oil for the lubrication purpose no lubrication system but the the oil is is coming up through the again through the piston ring and it it, it mixes with the combustion uh, process and then perhaps the engine is overheated okay when the engine is overheated usually the uh, the the uh, the uh, cylinder head is damaged and it cracked okay the engine is cracked or you know the 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 piston is burned you know or the the uh, valves is also burned so they need to they also need to be overhauled okay so these are the this is the diagnosis that most likely happened to the engine that's why the engine really needs a major overhaul okay and or perhaps the engine already loses uh power okay supposed to give uh, i don't know maybe 1000 2000 uh, horsepower but the the engine it does does not uh, you know does not uh, provide the services it's supposed to provide uh giving the right torque and horsepower of the engine because the engine already lose power because the engine is already worn out and that really needs a major overhauling also yeah and what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the cost uh, the labor cost only that that is uh, what we're going to determine but uh we're gonna determine that by having the man hour of course because that would be our multiplier okay we'll be able to determine the labor cost if we have the all the manpowers so those are the things that we're going to do that's why i put here the details of the work order these are the things that we're going to be doing in uh, which is uh, all inclusion of the uh, major overhaul sometimes uh, some people are calling it general overhaul sometimes some people are calling it major overhaul we just call it major overhaul okay these are the things that we're going to be uh, uh, you know doing as part of the work order okay coming from the uh, reception okay the customer reception or the customer uh, relationship management or the customer service okay we're gonna be doing a, an engine pull out from generator or heavy equipment uh, a mechanic will do these things you know um, some mechanics requires help but most of most of the mechanics especially the most experienced mechanic they're just doing it by themselves okay they can do it by themselves anyway there are material handling equipment or lifting equipment that they can utilize like overhead crane like gantry or something else okay so they don't actually need help so some uh, even as huge as this engine some mechanics prepare to work alone you know working on because they don't want to take chances by having a shop hand or a helper mechanic helper and do something uh, you know terribly wrong on some parts so they just want to work alone and make sure that everything is done uh, according to you know to the standard so that's why most uh, senior mechanics or uh, you know most experienced mechanics they want to be working alone okay these are the things that we're going to be doing engine pull out from generator it could be an, a generating sets up application or it could be a heavy equipment application just like a holder that's a, what i said earlier and then after pulling it out from the generator it needs to be washed okay engine was with the use of a steam cleaner, either steam cleaner or pressure cleaner. The things that they are going to remove by washing the engine is some dirt, some soil. So if you're only having some soil or some dirt, pressure cleaner would be enough. This is uh, you know high pressure uh, water, high pressure cleaner coming off from the nozzle. So you use that for cleaning the and removing the soil or the dirt or the earth. Okay, if there are some oil spillages, okay, some oil leakages, then what you do is you use a steam cleaner. Steam cleaner is hot steam coming off from the nozzle or from the hose, and that would be good in remo removal of some oils, uh, spillages all around the, the engine. Okay, and then the dismantle engine, all the parts will be dismantled for inspection, for washing inspection. 
then we're going to be doing sandblasting of all dismantled parts. Okay? Uh, you know, it's also cleaning by just using sandblaster. Okay? A sandblaster can be used when all the, the parts are already dismantled and you can sandblast it one by one. So in order for it to make it, you know, clean. And after sandblasting, the, actually the parts will look uh, like brand new. Okay? So sandblasting is so good for cleaning of uh, some components or parts. Then uh, we're going to be doing cylinder head re uh, recondition, bulb seats replace and grinding of bulbs and seats. Okay, some bulb seats need, need replacement, but you can also use the old ones if still good. And you just, uh, you know, grind the bulbs and the seats or uh, most of the time when they do major overhaul, they just replace the bulb seats and also the valves which is the intake valves and the exhaust valves and there are lots of them because this is a 16 cylinder v16 engine then engine block inspection uh, the the mechanic might be doing a hydro testing and and refacing if necessary it's gonna send it to to machine shop for refacing of the the engine block then uh, cylinder sleeves liners replacement okay depending on the engine uh, the engine could be a, a Detroit diesel engine, which is a which is a, a two-stroke cycle engine, or a, a Cummins engine, which is a four-stroke, a Caterpillar, which is also a four-stroke uh, cycle engine. So, you know, uh, the the Detroit diesel engines they call it liners, and guy, you know, the engines like Cummins they call it sleeves. And this leaf will have to be, you know, pressed to remove it and press again to, to install it. Unlike the liners can be removed by hand. Okay. And this, I would like to show you the, uh, uh, you know, the, I'd like to show you the engine that we're going to be doing. It could be the Detroit diesel. This is a 1.916V uh, Detroit diesel engine. Or you could be doing Caterpillar. Or we'll be doing a uh, major overhauling of the Cummins engine. So these are huge engines. These are monster engines, biggest engines use it, being utilized in the uh, heavy equipment and generating seats industry. All right. So anyway, going back to the major overhaul. Okay. So these are the things that we're going to be doing. And again, uh, cylinder slips, liner replace, camshaft bushing replace, intercooler reconditioning. Okay. Uh, some engine does does have intercooler. Some engines doesn't have intercooler or turbocharger uh, reconditioning. Some engines does have turbocharger. Most most of the generating sets are having uh, turbocharger. Okay, but other uh, equipment like uh, some heavy equipment, uh, sometimes they use they, they use engine which is only a naturally aspirated engine, or they. Some engines are using intercooled turbocharged type of engine. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're going to do a, a individual man hour determination of this uh, activity. Then we're going to be doing a calibration of fuel injector, uh, injector pump calibration, fuel transfer pump con reconditioning, oil pump reconditioning. We're going to be doing lapping or grinding the trash washer or replace if necessary. Okay, if the oil pump is really damaged, that's why you're having a problem knocking in the main, in the main, in the main, um, you know, in the crankshaft journals, the the main journals or the connecting rod journals, because pr probably the oil pump is not working anymore, and if the oil pump is not working, then there will be no supply of oil for lubrication into those those uh, parts like the crankshaft journals and the, uh, you know, the camshaft uh, bushings. So those parts will, uh, the, the connector rod bearings and the main bearings will, will burn out and will stick, okay, to the journals and, and knocking will happen, okay? That's what I said earlier, knocking of the engine. Then crankshaft main journals and connecting rod journals grinding, of course, you are going to, you know, to measure whether the the uh, the uh, the journals has to be has to go to the 
to the machine shop for reconditioning, you know, you know, uh, replacement of bearings, uh, resizing of bearings or something like that. Okay. Then uh, when everything, uh, all the parts are ready, then we're going to be, we're going to assemble the engine. The, the mechanic rather is going to assemble the engine, uh, like mounting of cylinder heads, uh, install the installation of camshaft, crankshaft, pistons. Uh, it takes some time to do these things, you know. And other parts like uh, installation of a uh, turbocharger, installation of uh, uh, in the water cooler, installation of so many other things, you know. Then adjust and take an exhaust valves and time the injectors. For for the for the uh, caterpillar, they got this what you call. Uh, uh, fuel injection pump, okay, and it will have to be sent for calibration. But the DDE, the Detroit diesel engines, uh, they it doesn't have the what you call the fuel injection pump calibration. They only have the uh, tra uh, the fuel pump, and then it goes directly to the fuel injector. That's why when you're doing adjustment of the intake and exhaust valve, and and also you have to do the time timing of the the injectors okay there is a special tools that you're going to use because the injectors of the uh, the Detroit diesel is it's also pumping you know there is a there is a what you call spring it is a spring loaded and there's a pump follower which is pressing the the injectors for injecting the the uh, for injecting the what you call the fuel for for combustion so what you need to do is you have to time the injectors this is for detroit diesel engines and uh, mo most of the engines now are having the what you call tappet uh, hydraulic tappet so the tappet is like the cam follower yeah right so if this hydraulic then no need for adjustment you just put it uh, zero zero uh, clearance and the hydraulic will uh, already uh, you know work by itself then the mechanic is going to mount now the engine, mount the engine on the engine test bench. Uh, most of the motor pool, they have what you call test bench. They are uh, running the engine off, off the heavy equipment or off the generator first before they're going to install it to the generator or mount it to the heavy equipment. They're going to test it in the motor, per, motor pool per, first. Because you want to make sure that uh, maybe there there will be no problems in terms of adjustment of the valves. There will, there will be no leaking, oil leaking from somewhere, you know. So they, that's why they want to make sure that it's 100% uh, ready for installation. So they're going to test run the engine and make the, any adjustment as necessary. Then um, and the mechanic is now gonna mount the engine on the dynamometer testing room so he's going to you know to couple the engine to the dynamometer there is also uh, available uh, overhead grain so there will be no problem for the mechanic to do it you know uh, installation of the uh, of the uh, engine to the dynamometer okay why, why is this uh, being done this is being done because uh, the mechanic wants to make sure there is that the engine achieved the right torque of the engine. And there are only two things that the, is going to achieve from out from this uh, overhauling, okay, achievement, which is uh, you know getting the torque and also the brake horsepower. You know the brake horsepower is the actual horsepower when the engine is giving you know is being given a load like uh, couple it to a uh, generator or the uh, heavy equipment, okay? Um, uh, you know, the, the, the engine is, is, if it is being subjected to load, the engine will, will have a brake horsepower, okay? The torque will increase and the brake horsepower will be, should be attained. If not, then there, should, there is a problem with the engine or maybe making adjustment again to the the to the injection system, to the fuel supply system, something else, you know. 
there may be some problems if if the uh, the engine does not have the brake horsepower. Brake horsepower is different from in indicated horsepower or IHP. IHP is like theor theoretical. If this is coming from the from from the uh, manufacturing, okay. And this is the the IHP is you know you uh, from the formula or uh, theoretical formula in in uh, finding out that. But that's another uh, another uh, topic. You know how you're going to get the IHP or indicated horsepower. What's important in this process is the you get the brake horsepower. That's why you you mount it on a dynamometer and doing the testing. Okay. So that for you for you to be able to see whether the the uh, engine will uh, reach the the uh, brake horsepower that's supposed to you know to give, then mount engine on heavy equipment and or generator and test run, okay. So that would be complete now the the engine overhauling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to determine the man hour, then the labor cost, so that we know how much. The the uh, the labor cost that we're gonna charge to the customer, the the one the customer who owns this uh, engine, okay? Because we're gonna be charging them, okay? So how are we going to do that? We're gonna be doing the labor cost first. In order for us to know the labor cost here, in uh, the man hour and labor cost, we have to know the the labor cost of the of the uh, the labor we have to determine the labor costing first the first one is the mechanic mechanics pay per month okay it is just say the mechanics pay, pay is around 30000 okay it could be in rupees or it could be in pesos philippine pesos okay so you know some regular mechanics like automotive mechanics they are just receiving around 18000 or maybe 20000 you know, per month uh, um, uh, salary, okay? But the, you know, heavy equipment mechanic or specialized mechanic or most senior mechanics, they're receiving more more salary around, maybe perhaps around 30,000. I'm not sure about this, but it could be that much because if you are a, a mechanic doing a 16-cylinder uh, V16, like Caterpillar, Cummins, Alice Chalmers, those kind of, you know, uh, engine, uh, Detroit diesel. Uh, you have, you know, you will be asking more for your salary, and you know the one receiving, being received by a a ordinary mechanic or automotive automotive mechanic for eighteen thousand is small salary. Nobody will, no mechanics will accept that kind of offer, a salary offer from some companies. So, you know. So I say 30,000. Then, okay, 13 month pay, uh, we're gonna get the 10 month pay and then the 14 month pay, some, some companies are calling it bonus or mid-year bonus, but some companies are calling it 14 month pay. So we're gonna calculate that. So it should be 30 divided by 12 to get the monthly, uh, monthly uh, cost. So divided by 12, right? So it should be, it would be 2,500 monthly. And then the 14 month, again, divided by 12 months, that would be 2,500 again, right? Uh, for social security, this is insurance. I'm not sure about it, but uh, let's just say 1,500. It could be 1,000, it could be one, two, it could be one, three. But I'll just make it, uh, you know, 1,500. And for health insurance, most likely it would be 1,000. Okay, you can make the changes if you want to make the changes and put the right amount. It's up to you, but I'm just giving you this template for my, for our lesson for this exercise. So it doesn't matter uh, whether the whether the uh, the amount is correct or not. The other one is it's DMF. They call it DMF. Actually, it's like a home development mutual fund. Okay, this is the this is an organization where the some of the employees can you know actually apply for a uh, housing loan so that they can build their own house. So they go for it for this it's DMF. So they call it home development mutual fund. 
if you don't if you're if you're still uh, renting an apartment a flat and you want to you know, you know start building your home then you can approach this uh, organization you apply for a loan housing they call it housing loan so okay and and the uh, and the uh, employer is also paying for this uh, okay this is a shared uh, responsibility the employer all of this uh, except the 13th month and 14th month pay the social security is the employee has his own share of paying i don't know how much and the health insurance also own share and the hdma also his own share but this is all of these are all coming from the employer okay we want to find this out because we know we want to know how much we're going to charge the customer for the major overhauling uh, cost right in terms of the labor cost so what how much would be the monthly the monthly would be the total of the, all of this so we find the sum of this sum oh, okay so that would be the monthly uh cost for the you know for the employer or the company 37700 so what we're going to do is we're going to make it hourly so that we know how much we're going to charge the customer so we're going just to divide it by 208 hours in 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 one month okay one month 26 days uh multiplied by uh you know eight hours because eight hours working hours for one for daily working hours so that would be 181 okay uh this is the cost you know per uh, that is hourly cost of course we're going to add you know add plus or add add um uh, i think the right word is add right so i'm gonna change it to add add markup okay markup so i'm gonna think that the markup should be around 30 percent right so 30 percent because uh there are also other expenses like miscellaneous or maybe of a little bit of overhead cost you know but we're only talking about the talking about the labor cost here no? so now we're gonna find out how much would be our hourly rate so our hourly rate should be uh, hourly rate should be around how much we're gonna multiply this because we we're adding markup or margins you know gross gross margins okay multiply by thirty percent that would be two hundred thirty six okay two hundred thirty six okay now we're going to the major overhaul uh, uh, sheet so we're gonna put it here uh, hourly rate should be coming from this uh, this one 236 so it would be 236 okay now we're gonna find out the man hour what would be the man hour for each each of this activity so that we know how much would be our labor cost we already have the hourly rate now the thing that we're gonna find find out is the uh, man hour okay Okay, this is coming from my experience, okay, determining the man hour. But, you know, uh, man hours could be different depending on the person. Person, this is the, uh, the, the based on person to person. A person could be a fast, you know, worker. A person could be a slow worker, you know. But, you know, I'm just trying to get the average of this man hour. And this is coming from my experience in the past employment where i was handling the uh, i was handling the heavy equipment including you know you know uh, those huge equipment like uh, like caterpillar equipment like bulldozer holders uh payloader with loaders you know things like that scraper you know uh, vibrator rulers those things i was i was involved in those equipment for like and also these generating sets 1,500 uh, KVA generating sets, you know, uh, 2,000 uh, KVA, 4,000 KVA, you know, huge, you know, uh, generating sets for the standby power supply of a company. I was handling that before. 
So let's just say that the engine pull out. Okay, remember, this is a huge equipment. This is not like uh, uh, a four cylinder, six cylinder, or even a V8. This is a V16, this is a huge, uh, you know, just like what I, I, I show you before. See the comments, comments or oh, engine. Okay, see the Caterpillar. Oh, those are huge engines, right? Uh, how many cylinder head? Individual cylinder head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight here, uh, right bank, uh, eight cylinder head in the, you know, in the left banks. You know, Detroit diesel engines also. These are huge uh, engines, so, you know. So it's not uh, a joke. You need some time to, you know, to do this thing. So, you know, engine pull out, I would say that would be 16 hours, okay? Okay, let's make it fast, okay? Engine washing, you need two hours for this. Dismantling of engine is, you need eight hours for this. And then the sandblasting, you know, uh, some companies are buying this sandblaster. You know, it's like a, a big uh, box where you have the, the motors and you have the sandblaster, the, the grid, you know, we'll, sun grid, grid rather, sun grid. Uh, this is also good for cleaning. You will see when you sandblast the, the parts, the components, becomes, it, it will become, looks like a, a brand new, uh, parts because it's very clean, really clean. So if you don't have this, then I would suggest that you get you buy this. I don't think this is much. Uh, uh, I don't think this will be that expensive. So try to uh, acquire this one, sandblaster. So for the sandblasting, all, all the parts will be sandblasted, especially those with carbon, carbonized already, like like the piston, full full, full of carbons already. Uh, the 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 cylinder head, there are lots of carbon deposits. Uh, the valves, especially the exhaust valves, there are lots of uh, carbon deposits. So you need to do the blast sandblasting of all these parts. So I would say I would need uh, six hours to do this thing. Cylinder head re reconditioning, like valve seats replacement, grinding of valves or seats, and you need more time for this. You know. You know the grinding. You need you you use grinding stick, and you're grinding how many? Sixteen cylinders, and each cylinder is having four, four uh, valves. You know, two valves for intake and two valves for exhaust valves, and you, for each cylinder you need to to grind uh, using the grinding stick. Okay, four valves each cylinder, and there are sixteen cylinders, so you need more time to this. And you need two days to this, you know, eight hours a day. So you need 16 day, hours for this. Then the engine block inspection, uh, hydro testing and replace, reface if necessary. So you need four, four hours for this, including the testing, including the inspection, you know, cylinder, cylinder sleeves and liners replace, uh, especially if it is a, a sleeves, uh, you know, you need to, no, to uh, send the uh, cylinder block to the uh, uh, maybe horizontal or maybe a, a what you call a hydraulic press to press it. Uh, you need time for this, okay? So I would say cylinder sleeves would be I would say four hours also, four hours, and then camshaft bushing replace. We're going to replace the camshaft. The camshaft is also uh, has to be. Uh, uh, press, you know, and there are so many bushing in the camshaft. So let's say four hours also. Okay. Uh, I would say, I think it, this would be eight hours. Okay. It would take more time to do this. Then intercooler recondition. You know, the intercooler, you need eight hours for this reconditioning. You have to open it and you have to clean it and you have to check the parts. You have to lap whatever parts that it is, like the thrust washers or, or uh, shimming, sh the shimming, you have to lap it or grind it. You need time for this also. So the intercooler is also around, uh, yeah, eight hours. And then for the turbocharger reconditioning, there are two turbochargers, one on the left side and one on the right side. 
you know or sometimes i think there are how many sometimes there are four uh, turbo chargers and uh, usually two turbo chargers and they're being uh, you know you know the turbo charger there is one you call cold wheel and there is or compressed wheel, compressor wheel and there is what they call turbine wheel or the hot wheel okay so you know the the turbo charger is be driven by the exhaust because the 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 exhaust is coming from the exhaust manifold you know okay so by the way i almost forgot i'd like to remind everyone that this this uh, video is uh, intended for you know some engineers perhaps some mechanics or the guys you know in the customer service for motor pool uh, the one uh, doing the uh, costing okay uh, in relation with the uh, you know the costing with the cost accounting you know so those personnel will need to have this uh, video in order for them to learn and you know learn more or maybe a refresher i don't know so turbocharger calibration uh, rather turbocharger reconditioning and that would be eight hours also okay so fuel injection calibration so fuel rather fuel injector calibration you need to calibrate especially the dde the detroit diesel engines you need to calibrate the turbo uh, the fuel injector that would be uh, i think also four hours and then fuel injection pump calibration fuel injection pump for for caterpillar you know remember 16 cylinder this is a huge uh, injection pump so uh, you know uh, caterpillar okay the dismantling of these parts are already included in the engine dismantling of engine dismantling and this uh probably this uh transfer pump will be just or rather the the uh, injection pump will be done by the calibrator calibration room you know the the technician who is doing the calibration then i would give this a injection pump i would give this around maybe uh around four hours four hours also and then for the fuel transfer pump okay before the fuel reaches the injection pump there will be fuel transfer pump from the tank okay supplying the injection pump so this is a fuel transfer pump and mostly our uh, gear type of injection pump or rather uh, fuel transfer pump i would say two hours only for this one oil pump reconditioning this is the lubrication you know system oil pump a lapping or grinding the trash washer or replace if necessary replace the trash washer you don't replace the oil pump the oil pump don't get damaged maybe the the uh, trash trash washer or maybe the gear themselves because there is a drive gear and there is a driven gear for gear type uh, oil pump so you just replace if necessary okay so that would be uh, oil pump uh, reconditioning that would be i think that would be four hours okay then for the crank up journals and connecting rod journals you need to grind also grinding you know by using a sandpaper uh, some kind of sandpaper a, a, a special sandpaper for used by grinding this is not not a normal uh, you know standard uh, sandpaper that they use they put a rope around it they wrap up rope around it and then they grind it using the rope okay i don't know how you Okay, but I think you more or less you know already how, how it's being done. If you are working in a motor pool, so more or less you know already how to be done, how this is being done. So that would be around eight hours. It takes take some time. This is a you no, know, this is a big uh, uh, crankshaft, right? Okay, and journals grinding and assembly. Now you're going to assemble the engine, mounting of cylinder heads, camshaft crown shaft pistons and other parts like uh, intercooler for 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 uh, dd you, you have a blower you have a turbocharger okay you have a water cooler okay etc so everything everything you're going to assemble now the engine so this one will take some time this will be three days okay eight times three days eight hours times three days that would be 24 hours then adjust intake valves and time the injectors this was this would be around six hours okay 
then mount engine on uh, engine test bench and test the test run the engine and this would be eight hours uh, including the running of the engine you have to monitor the engine and uh, look at the some leaks uh, leaking maybe oil is leaking from the center bearing of the turbocharger or maybe engine uh, oil oil is leaking from the uh, water cooler you know engine is looking uh, uh, leaking from somewhere else okay so you need uh, yeah eight hours and then for the dynamometer test dynamometer test would be around 16 hours okay two days eight hours times two days then mount engine on the heavy equipment or generator and test run this would this one would be around eight hours okay now we're going to sum this up okay sum this up sum starting from the mount of engine going all the way up then enter just enter okay a total of 164 man hours okay now we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the labor cost hourly rate okay this should be around uh, the man hour multiplied by 236 this is hourly rate this is already the cost okay so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, press the f4 for the uh, the uh, you know absolute cell reference okay f4 then enter okay so that will be able to copy it down all the way down so that we know how much all the total cost okay and then we'll just copy it okay so therefore the total cost to overhaul to do a major overhauling of, of a 16 cylinder uh, 16 cylinder v16 uh, engine would be around 38,640. This is only for the labor cost, okay? This is only for the labor cost. That's not, that's not include the the spare parts and other, and other materials, okay? So, right? So if you have a customer is seeking for a major overhauling of a 16-cylinder V-type engine, major overhaul, then you already know how much uh, how much the cost would be to wear hole and you see this is around 164 man hour we're going to divide that by uh divide that by 208 hours okay it's around three weeks okay it's around three weeks to do it so 164 uh, with the cost of 38,643 doing all these things okay major overhaul or general overhaul uh, you're going to fulfill the work order which is the engine major overhaul or engine rebuilding of a 16 cylinder V type engine okay that's it for now I hope you like this video and if you do please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified of all the uh, videos uploads of my new video uploads okay in, in the coming days uh, i'm planning to upload every other day i hope i'll be able to do that okay if i if i be able to do that then that would be good for everyone okay and thank you for watching